Right, it's time now to look back on 2002 and announce our car of the year. OK, and the nominations are the Range Rover. We've just seen it. It is the king of off-rovers. And the Mazda 6. The Japanese tried to take on the Germans and they succeed. It's a cracking car and very good value as well. And then there's the Mini Cooper S. It's the trendiest car in the world right now. It's like driving around in a supercharged parker. And the Audi RS6. It's fast in a straight line, fast round corners, and it's fast even when it's raining. Right. Have we missed anything? Anybody got any more thoughts that we should have put on the show? The 62. The what? Maybach 62. The Maybach 62 is a stupid car. We're coming to that later. <laughs> Anybody else? The Vauxhall Vectra. <laughs> The Vauxhall Vectra wouldn't be the best car even if it was launched in 1984. <laughs> and a really... Jaguar XJ? That was launched this year, was it? Well, Where are you yeah. from? <laughs> <laughs> Which part of the country? Coventry. Coventry. Yeah. <laughs> they make the damn things there, have you not noticed them? <laughs> I'm afraid you're all way wide of the mark. Uh, as are, in fact, the official European Car of the Year jury, who uh, voted in recently the Renault Megane. Car of the Year. Only if you do that. <laughs> so, our Car of the Year is... We've got some gold envelopes. Ready? It's the Range Rover. The judges, and that would be us, were impressed with its mono-thingy chassis, its supplementary heater, and the sheer Range Roveriness of it. And the next one is for um, this year's most pointless car. OK, and the shortlist here is the Mercedes Maybach. It's a private jet that can't take off. <laughs> and then the Ford Fusion. Don't be fooled by the ads. It is a Ford Fiesta in a hat. <laughs> And the Rover 75 long wheelbase, suitable only for the Mayor of Preston. <laughs> right. Have we missed anything there or not? SL55 AMG, you think is a point... <laughs> <laughs> so, let's go to the actual winner, which is... It's the Ford Fusion, everybody! Hey. Now, um... The judges were very impressed with Ford's idleness on this one. They knew that we all liked Mini MPVs. They knew they needed to make one, and they couldn't be bothered. Uh, next up, a very popular category here. It's the Weirdest Renault category. OK. Weirdest <laughs> Renault of the year. The nominees are as follows. The Vel Satis. It's a businessman's car, but only if your business is Enron. <laughs> the Megan, A family car, but only if your family is the Osbournes. <laughs> and the Avon Time. It's a sporty coupe, but only if you don't want a car that's sporty. <laughs> or a coupe. And the winner, the weirdest Renault of the year, is, in true mad Renault style, it's the Nissan Micra. <laughs> the judges noted that the designer had plainly got too much ink in his pen. Look at it. Stop designing it, man. Step away from the CAD CAM unit. You've finished. That's enough details on one car. Now the big one. Our surely you don't need the money. Award. And the winner is Eddie Irvine for promoting this host pipe here. <laughs> the man earned £6 million last year, £6 million, but still thought it was a good idea to put his fizzog on this box, <laughs> which is available in Woolworths for £79.99p. Now, we were going to make an award at this point for the fastest car around our track, which is the Radical, with an amazing time of 1 minute 19 seconds. But it seems that the Germans have been monitoring our broadcasts, and they got in touch, and they said that they've got a couple of cars which they think could blitzkrieg our track. This is the AS1. It's powered by a bike engine, the same Suzuki Hayabusa unit that we saw in the Radical and in the Westfield. It's, um... Where is it? It's gone. Um, 
Well, wherever it is, they've bored it out to 1.4 litres. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but the AS1 only weighs 600 kilograms. That's the same as my shoes. So, it should go like stink. However, I'm more interested in that. It looks like a normal Audi TT with a few stickers on it. And it has a normal Audi TT engine, 1.8 litres with a turbocharger. The thing is, though, it's been tweaked a little bit so that it now develops 400 brake horsepower. And that's the same as a Ferrari 360. Now, in a normal TT, the engine drives all four wheels. But in this, the engine drives the front wheels. The rear wheels are driven by a little something in the boot. Another 400 horsepower engine. It's got two engines. 800 horsepower. Obviously, I have to have a go. Oh, oh. That hurts. Uh, let's see how it handles. The corners are best taken with your eyes shut. That's my tip. Two engines. It's ridiculous. Twice the fuel bills. But, must be said, twice the fun. Great. But these cars must now face the acid test. Bit of Willkommen and Z. Dash dig. <laughs> and it's the As One first, but it's got no stereo, so the Stig's in a bad mood. Now, it may not look fast, but it's got hardly any body roll at all. Just look how flat it stays through the hammerhead. Right, we're coming up to the tyres now. Boy, that is so fast. Bit of flame there on the overrun as it comes up to the last two corners. Bit twitchy there, but he holds it into the last one and across the line. Next, the mighty double-engine TT, which is fast on the straights, but not so good in the corners. And yet again, no stereo. The Stig's going to be very cross as he comes into the hammerhead. Lost the radiator grill by the looks of things. A big, big burst of flame there as he comes into the final corner, and he's really earned his Christmas bow. Well done, the Germans. That was a very good effort. So are the times. Here is our power car lap time board, and uh, at the top, there's the... British Radical with an amazing 1 minute 19. Very, very good car, so let's see how the Germans did, OK? Uh, first of all, the MTM by motor with its two engines, all very, very clever stuff from the Germans. Uh, time was 5-1. No. No, that's not it. That's a score. What made it? That's a score. It's 1945. 1966. Six, no, no, that's no. wrong again. It's actually 1 minute 28. Oh. which is very, very good. Uh, that puts it faster than a Lamborghini and about nine seconds slower than the British Radical. There we are. Um, so what so, about the AS1? Well, a very clever little car again from the Germans. That managed it in an impressive one minute 29. Oh, dear. Which is you know, a very commendable effort. Oh, dear. Not as quick as the uh, British Radical, which remains as the fastest car of the series at one minute 19. Great news.